Hey YouTube, Adam here again. Uh, today we're going to be building a PC that is made out of parts that I already had lying around. I only had to buy one thing for this PC, which was a CPU. Um, it's going to be a machine that's used for offloading some of the video rendering that I'm doing, converting a lot of videos over to H.265 uh, and uh, then my YouTube stuff as well. I want to offload that from my main PC so that my main PC is available to do more recording and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to put together a machine for that along with running some virtual machines. So that means I need something with a lot of cores and a decent amount of memory. I want to be able to run a lab environment so that I can do things in parallel without messing up my network. I'd like to show some of the stuff I have going on in my network. Basically build a virtual version of my LAN. Um, and this seems like a good way to do that, so we're going to go ahead and get started with this. I'm just going to do a brief overview of the two main components of interest with this machine, which would be the motherboard and the CPU. Alright, so the first component I want to talk about here is the motherboard that I'm going to be using. It is an Asus P9X79 Pro. This is from like 2013 or 14, I believe. Um, it's a socket 2011 second generation. Uh, it can support up to 64 gigs of RAM. We're going to be using 32 because it's what I had. Um, it can do 3-way SLI, which we don't need because it's going to be rendering video. And SLI doesn't really help, as far as I know, at least with Vegas, it doesn't help um, with video rendering speed or anything like that. So it just would be a waste. Um, it's got three PCI 3.0 16 um, lane... Um, PCI slots. It has one 8 and one 1. Um, it also has a couple of, uh, it has USB 3, that sort of stuff. So it's a it's a fairly capable board considering its age. It was, you know, a pretty high-end board in its time and it should be able to accomplish everything I need for this machine to do. As far as the CPU goes, to go with that board, we have a Xeon E5 uh, 2695V2. This is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Um, it runs at 2.4 gigahertz, 30 megabytes of cache, um, which is pretty impressive actually, and uh, pretty high TDP, but with all those cores, you know, it is what it is. And if, it has modern features that you'd expect any CPU to have pretty much today still. Um, so it will be able to do all of the necessary stuff for virtualization that I want to do. It'll be able to handle a lot of different threads at once, so it should be pretty um, functional for what I wanted to do. Alright, so I'm going to go over the components for this machine really quickly. Uh, we have an Asus P9X79 Pro. This is a pretty old motherboard. It is a socket 2011 board. I have an Let's see if we can read that there. Um, There's an Intel Xeon E5-2695V2. It's a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. Uh, we're going to be using this MSI GeForce 970 that I have. Uh, Corsair TX850 power supply. Uh, Samsung 120 gigabyte SSD and a couple of these uh, Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drives that I have. These are just going to be scratch drives for some of the, uh, the video that will be rendered on this machine. And then we have a rather large CPU cooler. This is an Octua NHD15. Um, it's, it's large. We'll see it in a little bit here. And then uh, I have a Fractal Define R4 case that I will be using as the case for this machine. So I'm going to get the motherboard um, and cooler installed in the case and we'll see if we can get this thing booted up at all. Oh yeah, and I have uh, 32 gigabytes, which is 8 sticks of this uh, Corsair, this particular kind is 1866 megahertz uh, DDR3 memory that we'll be using. It's Corsair Vengeance. Alright, so as usual, I have my excellent cable management going here. I don't use transparent sides on the case, so I really don't care. It's fine just sitting down here. It's not going to affect airflow or anything like that. Uh, we got our memory, we got CPU, graphics card, all of the 
various cabling is done. Um, I'm going to be putting a few capture cards in this eventually, but I don't have them right now, so uh, we just have the four um, empty PCI slots for now. Uh, I think I'm ready to go ahead and put this cooler on now. Um, this is actually the size of this thing, so I'm going to have to probably stop recording while I put this on. I think it's going to be a little difficult. Well, I, this was a pain to get in. Um, with the CPU cooler that I, I mean with the memory that I have, uh, there's no room for the second fan, so we're just going to go with the single fan. Um, I had to actually remove the video card in order to get the clip on the fan here. It was a, it was a little bit of an effort. But I'm going to go ahead and get a monitor hooked up and power and such, and we'll see if this thing will actually boot. That is a shrill beep. Yeah, that's that's fine. We have a CPU fan error, so it's the old plugging that into a different one or something. So it looks like it recognizes the CPU. Um, yeah, that really isn't uh, an error. I think it's just the size of the fan that it's having trouble with. Let's go ahead and enable that. See if we can get the memory. I don't know why it's running. The the motherboard itself must have a limit because these are all much faster memory than that. Um, looks like we're on BIOS version 4801. I'll have to check to see if that's the most recent. Windows Boot Manager, so it's recognizing. No, it's not correct. See if we can figure out the boot stuff here. Uh, CPU configuration, looks like hyper-threading and all that stuff is enabled, virtualization is enabled, that's good. Boot, there is boot. Fast boot enabled. Where is the boot order though? Okay. Alright, we may need to go ahead and reinstall Windows because it seems to have some issues here, but I think we're good. Let's go ahead and exit. Save changes and reset. Uh, sure. See if it'll boot with the memory overclocking that we have on. Man, I need to find a different beeper. I like having a beeper, but I do not like that one. Does it really make me run setup every time because of the, uh, the fan thing? Huh. Let's see if we switch the fan here real quick. See if we get any farther here. There is a Windows installation on this SSD. I don't know if it's going to actually work because it's from a different machine, but Windows is usually pretty forgiving about that these days. We'll give it the old college try. Alright, so it's the next day. The machine kind of had a burn-in period. I did some video rendering on it, and it's been running just fine. So I'm going to get the sides on it and get it into its new spot. Alright, so at this point we are remote desktop in. The machine's up and running. All the Windows updates have done been done. Windows is activated. I've actually set up um, my drives and everything the way I want it to be. So everything's good in that department. I apologize if you can hear some road noise. I have to have the window open. It's really hot here still. It's 10 o'clock at night. It's still like 80 degrees right now. Um, but we get the Xeon processor here. There's our 30 megabytes of L3 cache. Motherboard information, 32 gigs of DDR3. Um, there's you know information about one of the DDR3 sticks. There's our GeForce GTX 90, or 970. 
Um, I believe this actually has my main PC. I'm still using an older Core i7, uh, 770K. So we can compare to that right now. So as you can see, it looks like it's outperforming by almost a thousand points over um, this CPU in multi-threaded things like video rendering, that would be multi-threaded. Uh, but it's about 50% as fast, which you'd expect because it's around 50% um, the clock speed uh, in single thread, which is fine because um, you know it's not really going to be an issue. It's going to be doing a lot of multi-threaded work. That's why I have it for that virtualization and for um, video rendering. So, uh, like I said, this machine is made of parts that I just had. The only thing I actually purchased was this CPU. I wanted to put this motherboard into use because it's a nice motherboard, even though it's six years old. It's still pretty capable. All right, and that pretty much wraps up what we're doing here today. Uh, this is a pretty quick video. I just wanted to get kind of an understanding of what this machine's purpose is, what it's going to be used for. We will be using this machine quite a lot going forward in the channel for that virtualization stuff uh, with hyper-threading, I mean uh, hyper-V rather, and uh, all that to set up a virtual network and uh, recreate some of that stuff, go through what software I like, what operating systems I like, that sort of stuff, and experiment with new stuff that I haven't tried. Um, eventually, I probably do want to have a dedicated server for this with maybe two of these processors or something newer, but for the time being, I think this will work pretty well for what I want to do. Um, you know, it's cheap as chips pretty much because I had everything. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, please leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.